Then they'll look back down. And the next time they look up, they've got a vertical line right here. And what I've found about communication is that usually means it is not registering. Anytime there's a vertical line here, it says something questioning is going on up in the gray zone. All right? And they'll take this, and they'll start backing out of the bank, <laughs> folding it as they go. Maybe three times if it's a big bank by the time they get to the front door. <laughs> and if it's an old time bank, especially down the Mississippi Valley, we've got some banks where the building itself is a national historical building. It's on the register of build art deco buildings. And if it is, it probably means that right by the front door, there's one of those ashtrays about this tall that's made out of marble. And it has what in it? Sand. And some of them now, they even, have you been to hotels where they stamp their logo in the cigarette stand? I thought, what a job. At any rate, they get there and bam, they plant it. And we always looked at that and thought, well, perhaps if we water them. <laughs> and you know what I think people were saying without saying anything? What? I don't know how to do this. It scares me, and I'm going to go away and not what? Come back. Come back. And we thought, that's crazy. We can take the, the, the whatever is misunderstood here or what is scary about this out of it. Again, this is just another way of telling a story, isn't it? It's another chapter in the story of a business. The other thing that happens, there is another possibility. They take it and they go, so, want a cash flow, huh? You OK? And they walk out of the bank, and where do they take it? Who do they take it to? Their accountant. Their accountant. And what do they say? Give me a cash flow. <laughs> They'll use the same inflection they heard. And especially if you go back a few years before computers, the old accountant he or she would ask a few questions. They'd fill it out, give it back to the customer. The customer would walk in and go, here you go. And when you looked, you could always tell. Because accountants have a special kind of writing. You know, it is so pretty. One, seven. And you'd look and you'd say, well, you knew darn well they didn't do it. So you'd say, well, uh, what about that? And they'd go, I don't know, my accountant did it. And I don't know about those of you who have been bankers besides me, but I always wanted to do this, and I never did. I always wanted to go up to the accountant and say, I understand you filled this out. Yeah. Well, we're fixing to loan him $700,000. Would you mind co-signing it? <laughs> They're going to go, whoa. <laughs> we just used the numbers he what? gave us. And I'm thinking, oh, wonderful. I've got one person who doesn't believe it and one person who can't read it. So I ought to loan him $700,000 of your money. We can do significantly better than that. This is a tool. It's not a chore. It's a tool if we understand how to use it. And that's what this section is all about, OK? So you've already reviewed our uh, introductory material. And you've also reviewed the glossary again. So we've got a set of terms. And you've got one of these big cash flow forms. And what we're going to do now in this section is we're going to fill it out. And trust me, it will be fun. <laughs> All right, so what we need to do first, we've got a company. It's called Olympic Flooring. And we want to have a projection of what next year is going to look like. Using a, a, And how do we get that? Where do we get that projection of what next year is going to look like? Where is that information stored right now? In the mind of whom? The potential, the business owner, the potential borrower. And we've got to extract it. 
based on how much knowledge is there up there about your business? There's a ton of knowledge about your business. Once again, what we're trying to do is take that knowledge and put it in a decision relevant format. You with me on this? So that it helps tell the story of the business. But this is the story. When we have financial statements, that story has already been written. This is the story that we're about to write. And we're going to think through it. If we don't just start writing blindly and following random thoughts, we can plan how this is going to be. And some of it will be planned for us based on how our business behaves based on what industry we're in. Some industries are seasonal, some are flat, right? Seasonal business, common, common thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a trip through this. And the first thing we're going to do, as we have in each of the prior sections, is we're going to focus on the mechanics of how to. How to. If you can't do one of these, what it means as a tool is irrelevant if you can't fill it out. So in each of our sections, you've noticed we do the how to first and the why to second. With me on this? All right, so this is the how to. And we've got two chunks to fill out. We've got lines 1 through 9, which is labeled what? Profit plan. So that's going to be our projection by month of the income statement. You with me on this? And then we've got lines 13 through 25. And what does that say? Cash budget. Cash budget. This is not the income statement. This will be your checkbook. In effect, this will be your checkbook. And what we're going to talk about is, based on these two patterns, how do we reconcile these two patterns, and why aren't they the same? And what is it that drives the profit plan, and is it something different that drives the cash budget? And we'll find that, indeed, there are two cycles here. There are really two cycles here. But to do this, we have to go back in time a little bit, and we have to take a look at where we were, all right? And to do that, I'd like to pull up a page out of your case study. It's the ratio scorecard, OK? I've got the last three years of his ratio scorecard. And what I'd like to do is take a look at that from the standpoint of how's he doing? Olympic flooring. He's got some problems. If we went through. What would we do if we were going to do a full-blown analysis of this? What's the first thing we'd grab? A road map. We'd grab a road map, right? And we'd start looking at these just like we did with Cascade. We're not going to do that here. I just want to share with you kind of an overview of what this company looks like. This is an established business. Had significant sales growth, 25% in the latest year. He's ended up borrowing money. And we want to look at how his balance sheet is structured. Because once we start talking about cash flow, we're really talking about what? Income statement or balance sheet? Balance sheet. Income statement's going to have an impact. That's going to set up the pattern. But it's the balance sheet where these, these uh, cash flow issues are really going to shake themselves out, isn't it? The other thing we can note, if we look at line five, What's happening on line five on this ratio score sheet? Profits are going which way? Yeah. Profits are going down. If we look at his ability to generate cash, ratios one and two, what's happening with those? Yeah. So we've got his, sa the big picture is we've got his sales going up and his profits and cash going what? Yeah. South. Somewhere there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be an impact here. Something has got to give here, right? Something's got to give. We've got to change this pattern somehow. Let's assume as his consultants, we put him through the process. And now I'd like you to take a look specifically at his balance sheet. This is what the just year just ended, all right? This is the year just ended. Cash of how much? Just make some mental notes here. He ended the year December 31st. Cash of how much? $6,800. So think about this now. What's he going to start next year with? $6, Not a trick question. $6,800. Think of this as your checkbook. Your checkbook works the same way. What you end one month with, you, end, you begin the next month, OK? And you can see, by the way, I'm starting to make a few connections here. 
that on line 13, beginning cash, this is next year. Right? This is next year, line 13, January. What's his beginning cash? We've got it marked in for you. So that's where the connection happens. We also know that he has total assets of how much? Right now, December 31st, year ended. Total assets of 448.2. Way down at the bottom. Liabilities and net worth of what? One good piece of information, the balance sheet balances so we can keep the accountant. This is a good thing. We'll talk about this a little bit more in our next section. Is it possible for the balance sheet not to balance? Yes, we got them at the bank. It always calls into some question what's really going on, but it's possible. All right, we also know that his short-term debt at the bank, his note payable bank right now is how much? $165,000 and his total current liabilities are how much? Everything that's going to go out in the next year? $350,000. We also know that his, so his current liabilities are three fifty. dollars What are his total liabilities? Three fifty. dollars as well. So what does that tell us about the amount of, of long-term debt? Zero. Nada. There is no long-term debt. How much did he probably put up to start this company? His capital stock shows, his count shows how much? 35000 he probably put up to start the company. And his cumulative retained earnings for however long he's been in business, how much? 63 So we've got a net worth of 98 total liabilities of 450000 Those two sources of money total to 448 liabilities and net worth. He bought assets of, liabil of 448 too, to support sales of $1,077,000. You with me? Okay, so that's where he's starting. Now, what I'd like you to do is take a look at the first page of your case study. There's a couple of things he's trying to do. One of them is, in that little box at the top of the case study introductory page, there's two things he wants to do. Number one, he wants to renegotiate his short-term debt and make it what? Long term. Long -term. That 165000 he wants to make it long term. And secondly, what's he doing? He's contacting his suppliers, and what's he saying? I think he's saying something that would sound like, help, I need help. Give me some slack here, and don't worry, I've got a plan. I promise to pay you. Can you negotiate with suppliers? Absolutely. At least what? <laughs> Once. And it's really good to be able to live up to whatever you commit to. And we can measure our performance so that we don't make commitments we can't keep. OK? That's what he's trying to do. Now, take a look at his profit and loss projected for next year. What's it look like? Oh, and I got to tell you one thing, just so you know. This last year, he did sales of a million seventy-seven. Okay, this last year, he did sales of a million seventy-seven, and now he's projecting sales of what? A million four thirty. Now, I want to go back and make one connection here. In other words, if you have his financial statement from the prior year or two years, or three years. Those are actual. This one we're projecting means, when we say projection, what do we mean? Excuse me? A guess. A guess. Using a highly technical system that some would call SWAG. Acronym, scientific, wild ass guess. Which, as it turns out, is better than no scientific wild ass guess or the completely generic wild ass guess. All right? In other words, but it's a guess based on what he knows about the economy, what he knows about his industry, what he knows about his company, what he knows about the, this ton of information up here that somehow goes through this amazing computer, and he's got some idea about where he wants to go. 
and he's going to tell us what it is, and we're going to lay it out and see if it'll work. Not only from the sales standpoint and profit standpoint, but from the what? Cash standpoint. Can it work? All right, you with me? So what is he projecting for next year? A million four thirty. Cost of goods sold. Oh, by the way, he's got to improve his margin, so he's done some work there, and he's projecting an improved margin. All those things we might tell him in a profit mastery assessment with his report card, all of those things, he's going to now try to project in here. This is part of his plan. I've broken out depreciation. Why? It's a non-cash expense, right? It's, a, it's an expense, but we don't write a check for it, correct? Total operating expense is 314, leaving a profit of before tax of 43, pay some tax, and we got profit after tax of what? 36.3, with me? Okay, now what I'd like you to do is take a look at the next page of the case study. I've broken out his sales by month. I've broken out, I've taken his projected sales for the year and I broke them out by month. January. And the first column is the month, the second column percent by month. When you run your eyeballs down that second column, what do you immediately see? This is what kind of business? Se clearly seasonal around what? Late spring, early summer, right? Something like that. Common. Now, where did I get those numbers? Last year and the year before and the year before that. If he's a seasonal business, he's probably always going to be a seasonal business unless something really changes in the core structure of the industry, huh? Yeah. 